1999, a revolutionary film with a neo-punk vibe, eastern influences, and a dark view on the future of mankind took the world by storm. The Matrix was so successful, it spawned a cross-entertainment explosion of media with an animated feature, video games, and multiple sequels to tie together an expanded universe. Now, 20 years later, The Matrix is viewed as an outstanding achievement in cinematic perfection and has even been added to the National Film Registry for preservation. But, as fantastic as the original film was, the sequels created a far more confusing and convoluted picture of the story, with the second film acting as a deconstruction of everything viewers thought they knew about its predecessor. So, for its 20th anniversary, I'm going to talk about both the bits and hexadecimals of how The Matrix works and its iterations. First, to get a clear picture, let's begin with a brief history of how The Matrix began and the robotic uprising, also known as the Second Renaissance, as outlined in the Animatrix and Matrix webcomics. At some point in the mid-21st century, mankind had finally created a fully functioning artificial intelligence and robot who could be used to do menial tasks. And I don't mean the menial tasks we already see robots doing today in manufacturing, but to the point where they were more like walking and talking humans, only mechanical. Which, fortunately, we're still far, far away from. Oh. Oh no. But why are you kicking it? Stop kicking it! Aww, this one's opening a door. We're doomed. At some point, one of these robots, B1-66ER, overheard its owner talking about sending it to get scrapped. However, the robot had developed the will to live, and in order to prevent this fate of getting scrapped, it murdered its owners. B1-66ER was put on trial, found guilty of murdering its owners, and it and its entire line of robots were scrapped, much to the chagrin of newly forming machine rights activists. However, technology would keep on evolving along with the various robots, to the point where they became autonomous. The robots founded their own city where they could live in peace away from mankind, and appealed to the United Nations for admission. This motion was not only denied, but their city was nuked. Unfortunately for Team Mankind, the nukes weren't overly effective on robots and it started a massive war. Last did Zero One's troops advance outwards in every direction. And one after another, Mankind surrendered its territories. With the robots winning the war, the humans came up with a plan. In this universe, the robots were primarily solar powered. So humans devised to block out the sun in order to cut off the robot's power source. Which is a beyond stupid idea as we need the sun too. So it was quickly shot down. This idea also backfired as, shockingly, it effectively killed off just about all of humankind's food sources. Not only that, but without a primary energy source, the robots experimented in finding an alternative solution. And after doing experiments on captured soldiers, what they found was they could use the humans akin to batteries. The Matrix is a computer-generated dream world, built to keep us under control in order to change a human being into this. So, as Morpheus briefly explained, the robots set about a mass enslavement of humans in order to harness their energy and use them as batteries. And thus wraps up the history preceding the Matrix. So, let's talk about the various iterations of it. While the first film firmly established the Matrix for the viewers and a strong importance around the character of Neo and The One, the second film, The Matrix Reloaded, serves as a deconstruction of everything viewers thought they knew with a set of revelations. When Neo talks to the architect and creator of The Matrix, he learns, The Matrix is older than you know. I prefer counting from the emergence of one integral anomaly to the emergence of the next, in which case this is the sixth version. The architect flat out tells Neo, and therefore the audience, at the time the film takes place, the robots are currently on their sixth iteration of the Matrix. 
which is basically Windows Vista. I'm genuinely curious to see how many people understand that joke. The first version of The Matrix was created as an idealistic utopia for humans, which would create the least amount of resistance and put humans in a prolonged slumber state until death while the robots harnessed their energy. However, as it was so unrealistic, humans universally rejected this, causing The Matrix to fail. Version 2 was, however, also a failure. While it isn't explicitly explained why, it would seem that this was due to the lack of giving humans the illusion of self-choice. At one point in this Matrix release schedule, a program was created in order to discover what was going wrong. It could understand the intuitions of humans and study their behavior. This program came upon the discovery of choice, and the importance of incorporating this into future versions of the Matrix. Now, if this program sounds familiar, that's because viewers had seen her in the first Matrix film, The Oracle. If I am the father of the Matrix, she would undoubtedly be its mother. This turned out to be an almost perfect solution. With this minute ability of choice, the human brain was tricked and the Matrix didn't crash as it had before. However, while it was a 99% success, due to the various uncertainties that come with choice, an anomaly would be born that had the ability to use the code of the Matrix with Matrix programming that somehow came from the source, which is the central power for all of the machines. Because the architect couldn't find a way to eliminate this anomaly, he instead worked with the Oracle to create a fake hunt for the source known as the Prophecy. Instead, this would lead to him, and he'd present the one with a choice. Either return to the Matrix, in which case him, being the anomaly, would create an entire system crash, ergo killing all of the humans connected to the Matrix, or return his programming to the source. On top of all of this, the machines knew about the last human settlement, Zion, and had the technology and capability to destroy it. So every time a human anomaly would come about, they would destroy Zion, both to keep the human population in check, and likely to force the anomaly to save humans from going extinct, both from the extermination of Zion and the crashing of the Matrix. So, something that's a little confusing here as far as versions go is this following quote from the architect. I prefer counting from the emergence of one integral anomaly to the emergence of the next, in which case this is the sixth version. The architect explains the first couple versions of the Matrix were huge failures, and not due to an anomaly, but rather his failure to create a program compatible with humans that wouldn't crash. However, he makes it clear that Neo is the sixth anomaly, and considers this the sixth version of the Matrix. So, maybe the first two versions of the Matrix are more like versions 0.5 and 0.8 beta versions. You know, like the Steam Early Access versions of the Matrix. They came out way too early and are just buggy as hell. Now, I think the best way to really think about everything going on in the Matrix is in terms of computer programming and computer science. Maybe because I was a computer science major, but it really struck a chord with me in terms of the way the programs were talking about the Matrix. It's been a while, so I might be confusing some of my terminology in the following example, so... So, if I'm the architect, I build this complex program called Matrix, to keep it simple. Within this program, I have all of these variables and all of these constraints to check for bugs and compile it all together to ensure there are no errors. However, I have a class in my program that we'll call Human. It's linked to real-life humans and interacts with their brains. Now, the only way that I can get this object of human to work without crashing is to introduce a variable that we'll call choice. And great, now my program isn't crashing, but I'm finding that a new bug eventually arises we'll call the one. This bug is a human object, but can entirely destroy my code which will lead to another system crash. So, once again, being the diligent programmer that I am, I have to find a way to solve this. The thing is, if you've created a variable as part of an object, like choice, you always have to account for it. So, in the case of Neo, we have to give him a choice, otherwise the entire program will crash. So, hopefully that made sense for some of you. It honestly helps me think about the Matrix, and this idea of a program with various objects and functions will help us understand various elements of the films. Another important note that we get from the architect is that it's been an extremely large amount of time that the various Matrix versions have been running, and if Neo chooses to save the Matrix and go to the source, he's allowed to choose 23 individuals to repopulate Zion, 16 females and 7 males. If you look at just how many humans there are during the bizarre rave scene at Zion,
Honestly, this scene more than anything made me not want to live there. You can kind of start to imagine just how long each interval between Chosen Ones must have been for Zion to reach that population. That's one crowded rave. Now that we have an overall understanding of how the Matrix works, let's take a look at past versions. Look, see those birds? At some point, a program was written to govern them. A program was written to watch over the trees and the wind, sunrise and sunset. There are programs running all over the place. The ones doing their job, doing what they were meant to do, are invisible. You'd never even know they were here. Going back to programming for a moment, when you create a class, it's always to serve a specific purpose. Typically, you can use this class to spawn multiple instances of objects with various characteristics given. So, in my human example, we would give a human object a body, which would have its own set of codes and functions separately, and also in this case, choice. Also special to humans, these objects would each contain a link to real-life humans in the real world to distract them while robots harness their energy. But the only objects in the Matrix that aren't robotic are the humans. It's safe to say, given our knowledge of the Matrix, every bird, dog, and animal is a fake object given random characteristics. Now, I can't be sure of this, but I'd also guess that each of these objects are also given the function of choice, which I'll explain in a bit. But let's talk about some of the objects that were created in past iterations of the Matrix and rejected in future iterations. But the other ones... Oh, yeah. You hear about them all the time. I've never heard of them. Oh, of course you have. Every time you've heard someone say they saw a ghost or an angel. Every story you've ever heard about vampires, werewolves, or aliens is the system assimilating some program that's doing something they're not supposed to be doing. Programs hacking programs? Why? Well, they have their reasons, but... Usually, a program chooses exile when it faces deletion. As we now know, there were previous iterations of the Matrix with the Architect, who's essentially just a computer programmer, just a robot version of that, experimenting around and trying to perfect his previous codes to make less and less errors. Through this, many of the things that humans considered to be legends, such as ghosts and vampires, were actually created by the Architect and former versions of the Matrix. Now, presumably, these objects that are created have a self-destruct code built in, meaning if the architect decides a newer version of the Matrix isn't going to have vampire objects anymore, these objects will be destroyed and no longer exist. However, in the machine world, many of these contain artificial intelligence and are considered to be robots. And what we see happening is, just like the robot uprising, this AI is starting to override its functions and no longer want to be destroyed. Ironically, just like how humans created robots with AI, with the AI fighting back to stay alive and creating the Matrix in the first place, the robots are now creating their own AI, which is also now starting to rebel to stay alive. We see examples of this in what's known as the Exiles, best represented by the twins of the Matrix Reloaded and the family in the Matrix Revolutions. I love my daughter very much. I find it to be the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. But where we are from, that is not enough. Every program that is created must have a purpose. If it does not, it is deleted. We also briefly see a few of these in The Matrix Reloaded. Werewolves who were created in previous versions of The Matrix that were saved by the Merovingian to suit his personal needs. These fellas work for my husband. They do his dirty work. They're very good, very loyal. Aren't you, boys? Yes, yes mistress. mistress. They come from a much older version of The Matrix. But like so many back then, they caused more problems than they solved. My husband saved them because they're notoriously difficult to terminate. How many people keep silver bullets in their gun? But who exactly is the Merovingian and what's his function in the Matrix? By all means, he seems to oppose the Oracle and hoards away exiles who shouldn't even be in the program in the first place. And for that answer, we have to look into the extended Matrix Transmedia and to the ill-fated Matrix MMO, The Matrix Online. I can't even find footage of this as the game is too old, the servers no longer exist, and the website was taken down. 
So I'm trusting matrixresolutions.com as a source with the screenshot I've taken from Wayback Machine. According to the site, you can find a code in the game, which translates to a real world internet blog post and website operated by the kid we see in the Animatrix and Matrix films who idolizes Neo. In it, he states the following. True, appearances do lie. There's no reason a sun-controlling program should look like a little girl, or an operating system seem to be a cyberetic French gangster. So, what that all means is, the Merovingian was, at least at one point, the operating system all of the Matrix operated under. So, in other words, he's basically Windows, Mac, or Linux, just a really bad version that no one would want to live under. Like Windows Vista! As such, the Merovingian would have been a leader in charge of the going-ons within the Matrix and a trafficker of information, pretty similar to how we see him portrayed in the films. However, in the films, he's now been cast away and living in exile due to a newer version of the Matrix. You see, there is only one constant. One universal, it is the only real truth. Causality. Action. Reaction. Cause. An effect. Everything begins with choice. No, wrong. Choice is an illusion. If you recall, the entire purpose of the Oracle was to introduce choice, hence what allowed the Matrix to finally stop breaking, and presumably what led to the first non-beta version of the Matrix. So it would seem that the Merovingian, who's programmed with causality at its base, is no longer necessary in a version of the Matrix that's programmed around choice. Hence, he's become an exile, albeit a very powerful one. Due to the henchmen slash exiles around him having fantastical powers, it's also very likely he was the operating system for the second failed version of the Matrix, which the architect created around the worst of humanity. He used this immense power and knowledge to stay hidden, like a bad bug on your computer. While he still functions as a trafficker of information, as he was created to do this within his programming, he's now morphed into more of a crime lord who harbors away various other exiles, presumably for personal gain. One of the ways he's able to do this is with his control over another confusing portion of the films, the Train Man. The Train Man is a character whose past is a little more murky than the Merovingian, so let's start with what we do know about him and the area that he controls, Mobile Avenue. Which, as an interesting side note, is an anagram for Limbo. The Train Man is one of the Merovingian's many henchmen, which would automatically imply that he's similarly an exile program. His primary programming and purpose would appear to be control over Mobile Avenue, which he's the creator of. Mobile Avenue being a rogue way to connect the real world to the Matrix, almost exclusively used for machines. While we see humans jacking into the Matrix using what I can only assume is a wireless network, the robots also have their own process. However, for exiled programs, similar to the Resistance, they would have to find a way in without the source noticing, or at the very least, able to stop it. And this is the current purpose of Mobile Avenue, for transportation of exiled programs in and out of the Matrix. While its rules are similar to the Matrix, it's definitely not a part of it and seems to exist outside of it. For my personal comparison, I kind of think of it like a USB drive that you can plug in or take out to transfer data. Now, similar to a USB drive, you need someone who can control the information on the drive and transfer it onto a computer. And that's, of course, the Train Man's job. Due to the Train Man's affiliation with Merovingian, it's possible that this was a means of getting machines into the Matrix during its beta phase and was meant to be phased out eventually. One thing I found extremely confusing on watching The Matrix Revolutions was how Neo ends up in Mobile Avenue after destroying robots with his mind in the real world. An interesting theory I found on The Matrix fandom, which I believe is likely correct, is that over the course of The Matrix Reloaded, Neo gained a Wi-Fi connection with the Source. This is how he was able to remotely kill machines outside of The Matrix, and similarly how he ended up in Mobile Avenue. This theory explains that because he refused to accept the choice the architect wanted of reinserting his program into the Source and Prime program, he was possibly identified as a rogue program. Thus, with his wireless connection, was able to be inserted into the mobile station. But one question I have, if the Train Man is in exile, why would the Source send Neo to an area that's supposed to be off the grid for the Source? It's still an interesting idea, and I'd love to know your own theories for how Neo ended up in Mobile Avenue in the comments.
In order to protect the Matrix from any possible bugs, the agents were created. Similar to white blood cells in humans, their primary purpose is to battle anything that would go against the primary functions of the Matrix as created by the Architect. This includes both exiles and red pills. As their function is one of protection, they've been given extraordinary power within the Matrix with the ability to override other programs when necessary. If you look at the world as a set of algorithms, codes, and functions, once again going back to computer science jargon, the agents are built with the functions that allow access and manipulation of other classes and codes, including humans who are hardwired into the Matrix. However, Agent Smith becomes something entirely different after his interaction with Neo at the end of the first Matrix film. I don't fully understand how it happened. Perhaps some part of you imprinted onto me something overwritten or copied. It is at this point irrelevant. What matters is that whatever happened, happened for a reason. Going off of what Agent Smith says, it seems some of Neo's code imprinted itself into Agent Smith when he attempted to manipulate the Matrix in order to destroy Smith. What portion of this code is is hard to say, but perhaps it was choice if Agents didn't already contain that function. As we later discover... What is he? He is you. Your opposite, your negative the result of the equation trying to balance itself out. The result is Agent Smith becomes akin to malware on a computer and begins to function exactly like a worm. Similar to a worm, Agent Smith starts replicating himself and eating up all the programs within the Matrix. Like a worm, this starts out small, but he continues to grow throughout the course of the movies, eventually taking over even the most complex and protected programs, such as the Oracle. He gains even more control over the Matrix, and in effect, actually begins destroying and taking over the Source. Another important thing to note is Agent Smith's ability to infect humans. While humans jacked into the Matrix are easy enough, Agent Smith is also able to infect a human red pill at the end of the Matrix Reloaded. Everything we see the red pill do within the Matrix essentially deals with downloading programs into the human brain in order to obtain a vast array of new abilities. While the red pills have generally been saved from the agents due to their limitations of only affecting humans hardwired into the Matrix, like Neo, Agent Smith's abilities extend far beyond that of a normal agent, and he can now infect red pills as well. So essentially, he's downloaded his entire likeness into a human host. Thus, when the human returns to the real world, the damage is already done and their brain has already been rewired. As we discussed prior, in order for the Matrix to work and not crash, the Architect had to program into every human the ability to make a choice. This would always lead to the eventuality that one human would become an anomaly and gain programming directly from the Source, and have extreme control over the Matrix. To counteract this, the machines created a pathway for finding the One via the Oracle, and leading the One to a point where they would have to choose to either preserve humanity from total extinction and give back their source code, or allow humanity to die by not giving back their source code. Not including the Matrix Betas, for five iterations of the Matrix, this all went according to plan, with the One always ultimately deciding to save humanity. In the process, Zion was destroyed every single time, and the humans the One chose would slowly rebuild it until this ultimately happened again. That was, at least, until Neo. But we already know what you are going to do, don't we? Already I can see the chain reaction. The chemical precursors that signal the onset of an emotion designed specifically to overwhelm logic and reason. An emotion that is already blinding you from the simple and obvious truth. She is going to die and there is nothing you can do to stop it. Out of love and in an effort to save Trinity, Neo instead chooses to return to the Matrix, allowing the possible mass extinction of the human race. He's successful in saving Trinity, thanks to his ability to override normal programming within the Matrix, hence his ability to rebeat her heart when a function would normally say that it shouldn't be possible. In returning to the real world, Neo discovers he has a new ability in the real world, a maintained wireless connection to the machines. The power of the One extends beyond this world. It reaches from here all the way back to where it came from. Where? The Source. That's what you felt when you touched those Sentinels. But you weren't ready for it. 
This maintained wireless connection with the source is what allows him to see where to go when he's traveling with Trinity to the Machine City. Like the source, while he can't tell where Trinity is without his visual scepters, he can sense where all of the various machine life is. In meeting with the Deus Ex Machina machine, Neo is able to broker a potential peace treaty by offering a solution to the Agent Smith worm. Essentially, if Agent Smith is allowed to run rampant within the Matrix, as he's been duplicating himself into every program that is a part of the Matrix and gaining access to their abilities, Agent Smith will slowly eat all of the machines from within and take over, as the machines are hooked up to the Matrix as an integral source of their energy. However, if the Deus Ex Machina allows Neo to plug in, he can act as a sort of anti-malware software, and is the only one who can potentially defeat what Agent Smith has become. In other words, Neo has evolved into Norton Antivirus. Neo is successful in defeating Agent Smith and returning the Matrix to his former programming. In doing so, he sacrifices his own life. However, the machines respect their end of the peace treaty, leave Zion from being destroyed, and allow humans who want to be red pill to remain red pill without chasing them down. And there you have the Matrix and various key elements to it explained. Are there any theories you have that I missed or anything you disagreed with? Let me know in the comments below, and maybe now you can rewatch the entire trilogy with a deeper understanding of Reloaded and Revolutions. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Peace.